Welcome everyone to another episode of Promptly Speaking, an IBPAP official podcast where we interview the movers and shakers of the technology industry in the Philippines. Today we have Sanjeev Gupta, who heads IBM's global delivery services here in the Philippines. Let's welcome Sanjeev to the show. Welcome to the show, uh, Sanjeev, and thank you for making it. Thank you so much, Jack, uh, uh, for having me here on this podcast. Uh, I have been into multiple forums in you know, stages live, but a podcast in a studio of this setup, first time ever. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad that it's, uh, it's with our uh, show, Promptly Speaking. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to our conversation. Uh, just to start things off, Sanjeev, Um, I think our listeners will be very interested to listen to your story on how you started on your career in the technology industry that eventually led to your present role at okay. IBM. So maybe I'll step back a bit. Uh, this is uh, like going back to when I was uh, in the stage of choosing what profession to really get into. Uh, mm. And if I look at the way things are, I... I I come from India, by the way, right? So I grew up in a middle class uh, family. And out there, parents would typically have, uh, you know, their children choose either of just two professions, right? Which is mm. become an engineer or a doctor, right? I chose the latter, right, in the process. Right? So once I got into my engineering, I figured out that uh, somewhere around the final year, right, that was... 1991 that uh, people would either get into taking up a job through the campus interviews or they would choose to take uh, you know higher studies like get into a post graduation in engineering or in management right? so i decided to go for my mba right uh, because at that time getting an engineering plus an mba degree would land up you know you would land up with the the creamest of the jobs right uh, in the industry So it's there I am. So I did my MBA and finally I got into PricewaterhouseCoopers, right? It was Pricewaterhouse at that time, 1994, right? Uh, first two years, I was into strategy consulting, right? Uh, working for World Bank, KFW, and so, you know, Mitsubishi Research and so and so forth. But then the ERP era, you know, that picked up at that time because of the potential uh, challenges that Y2K would have uh, really caused oh, yeah. so i wrote that right and i got into erp consulting and uh, that was also the stepping stone for me to get to the us i spent about three three and a half years in the us and became an oracle erp consultant right so that was the i would say the inflection point you were in new york i, I was based in tampa florida right oh. and, uh, so i lived there right close to orlando <laughs> right we can get away into the disney world and so and so forth But, uh, you know, as I said, so that got me into the technology, right? And it's now been two and a half decades that I have been in the, and it's like a long journey, you know, getting from being a Oracle consultant to, you know, solutioning. I have done project management and, uh, you know, run accounts, so and so forth, right, uh, to where I am today. Now, one, one thing which I really had as my motto, right, is that uh, flexibility. So I made about uh, six big relocations in my career, right? Uh, and each time, as you can understand, it hasn't been easy, right? Uh, from one country to another and so and so forth, right? Even within India, I changed cities, right? Based on the needs of yeah. uh, my job. Now, having said that, Philippines, moving to Philippines was one of such moves, right? Uh, uh, you know, when I came to IBM, you know, as part of the acquisition of uh, PwC back in 2002, the uh, thing which I really got into myself is that it's a big company. There are ocean of opportunities. And if you really want to grow, you have to drive your own career, right? Uh, and I kind of, you know, got into all those opportunities that I got. I've done tons of roles in IBM. So when Philippines came my way, I instantly, yes. And I would say that this has been my Uh, most holistic experience in the career in terms of the depth and breadth of the things that I handle out here 
as compared to what I have done in the past. Right. That's a very interesting uh, response because my next question is, you know, uh, global work yep. and where, uh, you know, where do you see the Philippines in comparison to those other global locations you, you worked in? Um, you know, uh, specifically, you know, entering and being such an important role uh, in the technology scene here in the Philippines. So we're, we're, how, is the, how do you see the Philippines? How do you yeah. describe it compared to those other locations and overall in the tech scene? Maybe again, I'll give you some background of how I landed up here, right? That will give you the context of how my mind worked in terms of uh, uh, driving things out here. And I'll give you a comparison between what I observe, right? Uh, between uh, the time that I spent in India versus the time that I have spent here, right? So I still have the memory of, uh, you know, this was a Saturday afternoon. I was driving in the streets of uh, Kolkata. Right, which was my base in India. And next day I was to fly to the US for a presentation with, uh, with a client, right, uh, where we were pursuing a new opportunity. And I was also supposed to kind of meet a few stakeholders in IBM out there because uh, I was being offered a role out there. And this is 2019, right. So while driving, I suddenly got a call on my cell phone from my boss in India, right, and he says, Hey, Sanjeev, will you go to Philippines? I was taken aback. Right? I said, for what? He said, you're going to head the center there. I said, done. So wow. in 30 seconds, I made the decision for a big move in my career. And, and it's like, I wasn't very familiar with the uh, Philippines. Not that this is a known territory. I would go there. I know what to expect. Mm. Nothing. But there was this excitement about the unknown. Right. I very well knew that this is the BPO capital of the world. Right. But I didn't have much of clarity about how is it in the technology space, you know, which is where my forte is. Right. So I, I took that and my leadership actually gave me the challenge that Sanjeev, your mission is to grow Philippines, right, uh, in the technology space. What year was that, Sanjeev? Uh, this is 2019. 2019. 2019. So mid of 2019 is when I came here, right. Now, once I came here, I realized what is happening, right? I did an assessment of uh, the entire uh, footprint of the work that happens for IBM. I looked at uh, the presence of the other companies that, uh, you know, are, are having their bases out here. Technology versus BPO versus, you know, voice-based services and so on and so forth. And I realized, and which is something my leadership has told you, don't make this mini India, right? You have to make Philippines stand for its own unique proposition right so the first thing i did in my first 30 days was to put a proposition in place right now my observation was that for a good or a bad reason right good part of the work that comes to philippines in the technology space is uh, i would say spillover of the work that happens in india right so if you've got let's say 80 90 percent of the work <coughs> uh, development or testing and in even a transformation project uh, that is happening, let's say for S4 HANA, you will have the big team sitting there. And then you will have a set of people who need to work the client business hours. Night shift here in the Philippines will be done by the team out here, right? Now I read this has to change, right? Because the value proposition that I saw, you know, the client centricity is something which is very high out here, right? And that has to be built upon. Now, Comparison wise, I looked at where is it, right? So last week I was having a kind of a town hall with a set of people in my team. And I was uh, discussing with them a new opportunity, which Jack, I've shared with you, you know, last year, which we have won a new logo. And I wanted to get them to join that, right? And I was convincing them that this is the best thing for your career. You can be here, you can build your career. This is an eight year contract I have, we have signed, right? So. You can grow and so and so forth, right? And I gave examples from my time a decade back where a fresher out of the college joined an account which I was running, right, back in 2011, 2012. And that person over a period of 10 years in that same account became an associate partner, right, wow. in IBM. 
So I said that team you can do the same here in this account <coughs> right which I am talking about. Now people will not be able to relate to that. And the reason being here because most of the work being spill over you get those small projects right 20 FTs 30 FTs kind of thing. So ability to build your career in one account long term isn't something that I saw people were able to understand and appreciate. So that is something which I'm driving a change out here. What I do is I and this kind of drawing the comparison right from a people perspective. So the change is like I look for gems, Filipino gems in my team and I try to put them in front of the client. And the moment you do that, you know the client and and I'm talking about the technology projects right. The one they get that confidence the client kind of says well now i can close my eyes and i trust my filipino team on these technology projects i tag that team as you have now moved from good to being great and that my, that is my aspiration you've right? been really quite a champion of uh, philippines tech talent and Absolutely. and and you know thank you for for uh, doing that and it's amazing because you know you made this decision to move to the philippines in 30 seconds Now let's talk about your experience since 2019. You know, living in, in a new country involves adapting to local customs. Um, are there any specific stories that you can share uh, on 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 customs or you know practices of Filipinos uh, that have left uh, a lasting impression uh, on you, Sanjeev? So it's a very interesting one, right? This was uh, again in 2019 right because I came in July and this was like somewhere around November uh, my HR uh, leader out here he says Sanjay I want to spend some time with you to tell you a few things that uh, you'll see happening in the next few days and weeks so we go out for lunch and this is in the Eastwood office right uh, he tells me Sanjay be prepared you'll suddenly see a lot of the local right filipino your team members coming to your office and giving you gifts i said mm, what's that for right because normally i don't like getting gifts i this is what i told him i said can i just say that oh no please don't give me gift he said no that's an indication of the fact that they appreciate you so much and that's their way of thanking you for being here and supporting the cause of you know growing the center and so on and so forth and he said that the expectation is that you will reciprocate which means you should also give something back to them mm. i said wow what is that he said this is the christmas gifting culture that is there in the philippines i must admit that i was ignorant about this right we have a lot of gifting that happens in india also in different occasions right but that in christmas this is such a prevalent culture wasn't something that i was aware about i said okay So in the first year what I did is I thought I asked him my chapter hey Tom what should I do you can give anything sunny bits and it will please suggest something I the easiest thing is to give chocolates right so I went to SNR I bought chocolates for everybody and whosoever came to my room I gave them chocolates right even to my team then I realized that it didn't excite me a lot right I have to do something different next couple of years I bought these vouchers right uh, from SM store from LD options from Starbucks and I gave it to it dills didn't give me satisfaction right this year during the christmas and new year i decided to make it personalized i gave personalized coffee mugs to everybody right you know with their names some kind of a caption and even describing them oh. right and and you have made in your words right? in my own own words right wow uh, that's a really personalized yeah, <laughs> it's like every name in my team i put a adjective to it to give you an example you have met dindai right so dynamic dindai that's there in the coffee mug right it's like that ram right reliable ram right kind of a thing so people appreciated that a lot and and you know they said that now i can never lose my coffee mug in the office because wherever it is left it will be back to me right so i i kind of really adopted and i try to improvise it you know in a way that you know see at the end of it i know this country is very people centric right i can succeed here only if i empathize with the culture and with the people. that's how our industry has grown you know on yeah. this foundation of human 
yeah. uh, empathy and and care and and you I I guess from the very beginning you uh, you saw that yeah. as a unique part of Philippine uh, culture. Um, let's switch gears yeah, a okay. bit, uh, Sanjeev. What what would a typical day look like? for Mr. Sanjeev Gupta? <laughs> no two days are alike. I can tell you, right? Today I'm here, right? Yesterday I spent the entire day with a client and my car was coding yesterday. The client was uh, supposed to be in the office by 9. I reached by 7 in UPIL at Techno Hub, right? Just because I wanted to be assured that I am not late at all, right? So I drove at 6 a.m. from my home, right? So each day is different. And whatever I start with, I figure out when I cleanse the day, majority I couldn't achieve, right? I ended up doing too many other things, right? But I'll share how, you know, when I started in 2019, I used to be in office between 9 and 10 a.m., mm. you know, because that's the timing that I would typically operate it uh, back in India, right? But I figured out when I would do a meeting, let's say at 10 a.m. or 10.30, most of my team would be like remote. So very soon I realized the typical work shift out here is either midday, right, or night. So I, I, I realized that it was taking me 45 minutes to 50 minutes to reach from BGC to the Eastwood office at that time of the day. I switched to a mid shift. So I started my schedule now from 1 p.m. And now I would reach office in 15 minutes because I would start at 12.30 And I know most of the Filipinos would prefer to take lunch between 12 and 1. So that time the streets, the entire C5 is, uh, I would say, very light, right? 15 minutes in office. And then I would find that people are kind of, you know, working the same. And I start feeling that I'm part of them. Earlier, like I would try to leave office at 5.30 and 6, you know. And I find everybody's working. I'm the only one sneaking out of office. <laughs> like, that didn't give me a comfortable feeling, right? But otherwise, you know, things are like, you know, a very versatile. I am... You know, I typically have a lot of government, governance meetings, right? Uh, reviews, uh, client visits. Uh, we are working on bids. Uh, sometime last week I was in Singapore again, right? To kind of work as part of a bid supporting to bring that work to Philippines. And uh, uh, I do a lot of people connects, right? There are internal, external events. So it's very kind of, I would say, multifaceted in the way a day goes, right? And, and I always... You know, tell my team, life is a journey of catching up on your backlogs, right? The backlogs never get over, right? It, You're always catching true. up. My, my own comparison is, uh, it's like a, a water faucet that you cannot, you cannot. stop. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a good analogy. Right? <laughs> you know, humor plays a significant role in many cultures, including here in the Philippines. Are there some memorable moments that, you've experienced yes. by living here in the country that whether it's in your work or daily life that you want to share yeah there are many actually right so i if there is one thing that i have got here is memories right many to take away but something humorous right i find it a bit unique is uh, uh, and this i learned in the early part of my stay here itself right so true to the filipino culture right i i Uh, uh, kind of when I introduced myself right to the client yesterday I said that born Indian now a Filipino that's the way I tell you know introduce myself so to the Filipino culture right we go out and eat a lot right as team so this was those initial days right is where I am with the team eating right there are about five six of us in a restaurant we have a habit right in India where the moment, let's say, one or two dishes become empty, you stack them up together, right? Just to kind of create the space, right, within the table. So I had this habit, the moment it's before even the, 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 the waitress or the waiter is coming, I would just stack them up. So there is this girl, right, who is unstacking everything that I am stacking up. So I'm like, why is she doing this, right? So, because I'm still new, right, out there, and then I asked this question separately, to one of the male team members that is there any girl specific thing out here that am, am I doing something that is offending anybody because I'm stacking all the plates to, uh, you know, dishes together. He said there is a 
superstition in the philippines right that if a girl is single before you finish all the food on the table if you stack up the girl may not get married i said wow i didn't know about this superstition right and it i don't know whether it's true or not but this is what i was told right unless he was joking i don't know but this is what he told me we'll okay. we'll have to do some research on that <laughs> okay so i said okay fine right in that case i will and ever since i have been very conscious because almost about 70% of my headcount in the in the in the country right for ibm is actually singles right so i ensure that i never stack up dishes anymore right i let the waiters kind of you know just take them away and replace with the new thing right wow i'm <laughs> i'm going to remember this one uh, sanjeev and and i and i i also smiled when you say when you were describing the stacking because that that shows your uh, engineering background it is absolutely very logical to stack empty plates that's that's what an engineer would do so that's a that's a great that's a great story um you know but, but but you keep learning all the time right is is you know different customs you know and as i said people in philippines are very cheerful right and uh, humor i think is built into the culture is is is, is what i figured out right uh, it's it's also part of how you know people describe filipinos as survivors yeah and part of that survivor kit is is that sense of humor i mean Absolutely. you know it it gets us through Yeah. Uh, many many uh, of the challenges that that, Absolutely. that we live now you know as someone very much involved in the uh, technology scene um can you describe how you see the role of uh, education everyone's talking about talent and yep. skilling but uh, what's what's the role of uh, education in shaping the future of tech uh, in the philippines and second part is what is ibm you know uh yep. planning and what do you guys have in store uh for continuing to build your workforce uh, yeah, in tech yeah yeah you know absolutely so i would say education is very important right and building that skill absolutely but just building a workforce who is you know skilled by way of learning and education will not get us where we want to in the tech uh, uh, landscape of the country right and i say that because the buying behaviors of the clients have changed a lot mm. if you look at over the years earlier clients would outsource big transformation engagements right which will go on for like 5 years 10 years and so and so forth and they let these service providers right system integrators to kind of bring in the workforce in the way they deemed fit right to execute so what we would do is we'll build up you know pyramid structures and we'll have you know the entry layers with people who are out from colleges right in big numbers and uh, you know who have that zeal to kind of learn and do things we'll just give them those trainings and they are on the job right uh, up and running nowadays the clients are contracting in smaller chunks right it's like they contract by phase uh, you know or or pieces of work they test out you know how the uh, sub you know the the system integrator is doing and then they would kind of sign up the next phase and so and so forth and in the process they tend to scrutinize what talent is the system integrating building right uh, uh, bringing in place right now what that leads to is you cannot have somebody who is i'm just making just trained in let's say salesforce right only certified right so you have to have a layer in the front which is facing the client which has got the experience and the depth and the breadth right and then you bring all the people who are educated behind them right this is the philosophy that works but that ends up in a process where the client is giving like purchase orders right buy positions you know staff augmentation mm. despite the fact that we we would want to have transformation projects all run by ourselves mm. staff augmentation is picking up right a lot right so that being the case education yes but backed up by you know that layer which has to be in the front and which is where i feel uh you know many filipinos who have gone out of the country right skilled right who who and I, and we have many filipinos in ibm globally right even when i was there in uh, 
Singapore last week I had my Filipino colleagues who are like architects right uh, very very solid project managers and so on so we need those people here right so that they can bring forward the rest of the workforce right so that's about education and skilling we invest a lot ibm right on 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 education and skilling in fact for the community there is a program called a skills build you know which has been there for last several years right and we have that here in philippines as well where we provide you know education in latest and greatest in technology free of cost you know students uh, in in schools in colleges they can take it you would also seen ibm uh, announced i think not too long back last quarter about uh, uh, 2 million jobs in ai uh, sorry 2 million people in ai that ibm will train till the end of 2026 right globally and a big proportion of that will happen in philippines as well right so we are making those kind of uh, you know i would say strides in terms of training. you know the the pace of technology is really accelerating especially with the uh, you know the advent of uh, generative ai um what are some of the other emerging trends uh, sanjeev that will continue to impact you know technology in the philippines and uh, how how is ibm preparing to navigate uh, mm-hmm. those changes the hype of gen ai is kind of over it's not got to the real stage already i would say there are so many real life use cases in gen ai which are now you know already in different stages of development right i would say and this gen ai is technology so it's going to drive more technological work is the way i put it so you would <coughs> see that technology demand for like data scientists data engineers right prompt engineers uh, data architects all of that is going to grow exponentially globally right and i think i was speaking at softcon last year and i was quoting the uh, you know the 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 kind of for the lack of a better price of a data engineer in new york city versus a prompt engineer so and so forth it's exponentially grown right in the last one one and a half years so technological uh, advancement is going to happen with gen ai right and and the earlier philippines scales up to that and kind of get ahead of the game versus many other countries i think we will be at an advantage position now what is going to get impacted possibly is the bpo space right uh, is possibly going to leverage all that technology and that will grow in the process because there will be new ways of doing work that evolve which will still need to be supported right by so bpo maybe contact center in the medium term you know not near term but medium term may see some you know leverage of new ways of doing the business so it's a matter of transformation in the way work gets done rather than work kind of getting impacted right is is the way i look at it now what is ibm doing about it right is uh we want to scale up right there is a lot of concentration not just for ibm but most of the companies today in india right uh, in the way uh, technology work happens right uh, so we are consciously moving technology work and diversifying right uh, and i gave you the example of uh, that uh, you know engagement which we signed up we consciously went with a philippines only solution and and now we are building that right we'll have close to 500 you know going up to 800 people wow. in technology just sitting out here in manila right and we, So we are consci- you know kind of trying to build that base here itself and diversify right among the center. You know it's great to see IBM as such a great example of what is possible because occasionally we hear that you know tech is not our greatest strength as a as an IT BPM destination but your example and uh, evidences that there is potential in 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 developing that 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 kind of talent in fact i counter that point right uh, when anybody tells me that uh, it talent out here is not yet because that's what one of my clients actually said why how i counter because today and i am making this statement for technology we have got six broad centers globally in ibm if you ask about which center on technology has got the highest client nps net promoter score it is philippines wow i mean we we have got a score which is beyond anybody's 
I would say few few months so back. So IBM Philippines IBM Global Philippi- Delivery has the highest NPS. Absolutely on technology delivery compared to delivery anywhere else in the world. I I I kind of don't shy away from making this statement to all our new clients. So so I have put my bets I'll put it this way that uh, growing Philippines on technology is is very much on right. and i can see that in the youngsters because we when we have got clients coming yesterday also we hosted a client we put a young workforce in front right and they make a very strong impact right they are so digitally savvy picking up technology for them is like you know they are very quick and this is the youngest workforce in the world right what else can you ask for right in terms of uh, getting them to adopt and i'm know, going to uh, mention that whenever i can that because that is a very significant uh, fact whenever this topic uh, comes about now continuing on the same vein uh, sanjeev in your own opinion what steps uh, do you think the philippines can take to continue to strengthen uh, its position in in uh, you know global delivery uh, services and and uh, you know what what other plans uh, can ibm uh implement uh to support okay to support okay. this first of all i think the entire industry should know and i think everybody knows s4 hana is a big opportunity at this time so me personally i am investing heavily to build and expand my capability on sap s4 hana because uh, most of the enterprise globally have not yet uh, moved from ecc6 to s4 hana so opportunities are humongous it's about who picks it up so for me that is one of the big best bets for philippines sanjeev But, um yeah. some of our listeners may want to know what 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 exactly that is so i think this is a good opportunity what what uh what is it so it's like when you imp- companies when they implement erps they need to keep refreshing it right over a period of time and the erp Uh, ISVs, right? They also come up with upgraded versions of that. Now SAP has been there for decades now, right? And there are many companies which are still on the previous version of SAP, which is called as ECC six for last several years, right? and they have been waiting for an opportune time to kind of make that shift to the latest version. This version ECC six is going to the support for that will stop from twenty twenty seven. That's what. SAP is announced right which means everybody has to move over to the newer version there is significant dearth of you know uh, talent in SAP as for Hana today in the world because everybody has started their journey in philippines we have got very good capability already at this time mm-hmm. it's just a matter of expanding it and you know picking up all of that work flowing into, into where the are uh, our workforce learning this Uh, SAP S4 Hana, most of it we actually do in house, but SAP itself, you know, is kind of making a lot of, uh, I would say, trainings available to people. In fact, uh, I know two of my team members are joining uh, an event which is hosted by SAP either this week or the next in in Manila itself. Uh, and just to take what new, right? But uh, uh, we have, you know, just like many of the other, you know, tier one companies. Uh, you know system integrators globally we have a very strong partnership with sap so all the latest and greatest that you know rise with sap just to give an example right we have got a very strong uh, internal training mechanism which we roll out globally right and practitioners sitting in the us or germany or australia whatever they learn my practitioners sitting here in the philippines learn the same right Uh, with an IBM is is what I'm referring to. So so we have been running these curriculums to bring everybody up to scale, and when you have got an ecosystem of engagements already running, right uh, for the last few years, many of them have become SMEs and experts in that. Right. And are your trainers uh, Filipino here? We have Filipino trainers, but uh, I would say globally within IBM, we uh, leverage a lot of uh, trainers from from India. right who kind of in fact uh, next month i am bringing over some of my trainers from india who are going to be based here 
and imparting education right to, to but who is conducting the training for your uh, workforce here in the philippines so we have got you a very fly you fly in instructors uh, when we need to but there are trainers like uh, i'll give you the example of project management skills right i have got filipino trainers out here so existing team members right who are kind of running projects they would be one who would be imparting the education okay. right and we have got a very interesting you know, lnk or learning and knowledge right or learning and development as it is called in different companies right is a very big investment in fact uh, last year right uh, we ran a program of uh, you know learning by competing and getting rewarded so the more you learn you get rewarded and you kind of do in competition right so we give education points right and education hours and based on that you become a gold learner a platinum learner a silver so gamification learner. is yeah, working gamification right and 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 we kind of do a very i would say high end signature event right in in one of the you know top hotels in the mm. in in the country and select people are able to make it to attending that event right it's an all day event right it's an exclusive experience but you are supposed to get so many education points to be able to attend that and people kind of over a period of 3 months work through getting all that education done all ibm education right so you do s purana certification you do your watson x certification right genai you know you do your hands on experience and you get badges out of that and so on and so forth right you get your industry education and we have had people doing that competing to actually get there right so that's the way we build our uh, you know capabilities and uh, you know nurture the talent to kind of get ready for the next uh, thank you know. for sharing that sanjeev i i want to go back to something you said earlier that there might be some disruption for contact center yeah now um you also mentioned that the number of roles in prompt engineering will will go up now would you say that contact center agents are in a strong position to become prompt engineers absolutely i think that's the career shift that they will need to make rather than just following an existing script with they today today right they get a call and they know you know what is the protocol what are the the questions are there the responses to give now based on their experience they are best placed today to kind of be the prompt engineer and build those you know make make the system learn right on on how to kind of uh, respond to you know questions that are likely to come they they are the ones and i see that that is the shift that these people can really make there what what heritage. are some of the additional skills uh, needed uh, by our contact center agents to become good prompt engineers i i i would say you know and i would just say not kind of limited to contact centers then in general right is where uh, i would think uh, philippines right talent need to really go towards is is about uh, uh, looking at career shift options reskilling yourself towards that and being ambitious right i'll tell you why right many of the contact center agents are possibly very happy doing it today but what they miss out is on the opportunity to kind of get from there to process and process to technology and i'll give you an example of uh, how we built our uh, you know an entire sap team for one of our very large global clients and this is where right i'm i'm getting the fact that we picked up when we start going to the market we didn't find many developers right and testers readily available experienced so we went and looked at our uh, process cons- uh, you know team members who are users of sap today so we trained them so users of sap means they know the the processes in sap very well how does the entire invoicing work how does the end accounts receivable work right how does the general ledger work right? so we brought those people trained them on testing the system and they have over a period of time become functional consultants in sap now contact center agents if you look at it right when they are called right you right let's say for a banking uh, uh, you know kind of a service that they are you know uh, providing they get to understand the banking you know the customer workflow right in the process how does an application <coughs> really get accepted because they are facing the customer is facing challenges with an application let's say right and banking is a huge opportunity today in the philippines itself 
if the contact center agents move over to process work right and onwards move on to technology work i think the career path is very much defined right i my message to everybody would be don't be comfortable with what you are doing today keep looking for those opportunities and get into those career shift and upgrade yourself to get in. eventually see you want to move up the higher value chain and that's what we want to make philippines right go up the value chain and and get into doing those you know a lot of innovation and technology and so on and so forth that's right? what you meant by ambition yes when you, when you first uh, yeah. formulated your answer to the question um i do have one last question uh sanjeev but before we go there let's let's change the pace a little bit okay. and uh um i will throw you some uh uh impromptu okay uh, question so <laughs> uh, try to answer this as fast as as you can um, okay. there's quite a bunch of it and just okay. say say the first thing that pops into your mind when okay. when you hear this question so this okay. this part of the fun part of uh, <laughs> of, of the show so um, i have a list here android or ios android what is your favorite filipino food uh chicken caldereta Nice choice. <laughs> Would you rather travel back to the past or forward to the future? Forward to the future. If you could switch lives with someone for one day, who would it be? Uh the the president of the Philippines. Coffee or tea? Coffee. What is the one Philippine vacation you would want to travel to next? Uh Palawan. Who do you think is the most iconic Filipino celebrity or personality? I I would still say President Marcos. The current yes, the current one. Yeah. What's one thing you cannot live without? My phone. <laughs> <laughs> And lastly, what would Sanjeev Gupta want to be remembered for? Uh, humility thank you thank you thank great you so great much. answers so moving to the last question um you know as a leader in the technology sector uh what words of advice would you give to aspiring individuals or entrepreneurs who are looking to make their mark uh in in the philippine tech industry very often when i speak to you know the practitioners out here in my round tables in my town halls uh i find there is a set of practitioners who are always resistive to something or other right it's like when i talk about oh you know we have got this night shift work they say oh i've got health issues okay i have got this domestic client right day shift do you want to work oh no domestic clients are very difficult to work with it gives me a lot of stress right i i'll have mental mental issues right okay i have got this commercial client global i'll give you the shift but you need to come back to work every day in office oh no having to travel every day to office is um, very difficult right it's it's kind of uh, you know is 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 uh, going to cause me you know stress in the tra- in, in in on the road and it will kind of burn me out and all the sudden i treat this all as attitude issues right and my advice to them right when i get to i ask them three questions do you want to grow in your career or not that's the first question i ask the second i ask do you really care for ibm's growth out here in the country i mean do you feel you know the passion about your company or you don't right and the third question which i ask is do you really want your country to grow in the technology landscape you know and be right at the top just like we are in bpo and contact center invariably the answer to all of them is yes right if it is yes you have to change your attitude right and and i'll go back to you know be ambitious be uh, the one to kind of get out of your comfort zone on whatever you are doing don't be content and happy with what you are doing today right you have to demonstrate that go getter kind of an attitude if you want to change the entire landscape right in the philippines and as i have said right 
i identify gems and i have got many gems right i have got something when i talk to people right uh, i say that uh, there was a king in india you know in in history who had nine gems in his court right wow what was his name uh, king akbar <laughs> that's his name right king akbar so i said that i have an aspiration to have nine gems here in my team right and i said i have already got five and they are all like on my five fingers do they know who they are not all of them right but i always kind of talk about four and keep the fifth open right so that everybody aspires to get there and i say that i have i'll build nine gems so what i'm trying to get to is i identify the gems and then put them right i want everybody in the philippines aspiring to be that gem right and with what we have achieved already in the country i see that we can walk wonders right if if we get that go getter so attitude. you're halfway to that goal of nine gems yes absolutely within my team itself right i'm i'm halfway already those were powerful words of uh, wisdom uh, sanjeev so thank you for you know sharing this with with me and with our listeners so you know i i really enjoyed uh, learning from from your advice and your insights and uh, i'm sure our listeners did too so you know i really want to thank you sanjeev for for spending this time with me on on properly speaking um and uh you know i look forward to uh many more conversations with you and i hope you stay in the philippines uh, for a very long time <laughs> i am very much here after yeah. all you're a filipino already right <laughs> i already said that right but uh, it was wonderful uh, hosting you jack uh, late last year in 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 our premises and uh, talking to you, this was much awaited right i was looking forward to it Uh, but i think to the listeners and everybody who is part of the i uh, it and bpm industry in the philippines i uh, really wish the best for 2024 uh, i think collectively this is the year of change right and uh, i believe we can take the country up on the technology road map uh, this year this is the year to make that happen right uh, so my best wishes to everybody Thank you so much uh, Sanjeev for joining us on on Promptly Speaking and again thank you to our listeners and and viewers uh, of the show. Woo! Thank you for joining us for another episode of Promptly Speaking. We hope you enjoy the show and I look forward to welcoming you for the next one. technology and business process management we are coders and programmers agile animators illustrators auditors analysts and consultants to managers nurturing nurses and doctors data developers and testers ba smiling cx stars and artificial intelligence engineers Whew. oh wait there's more we are problem solvers and number crunchers we speak in several languages including java python cypher and so on and on and on and we on. create heroes and villains we gain experience and level up in life we are the it bpm industry working with the philippines join us <laughs>